Come to my window. Wow, I can't sing it that high, but I can sing Come to my window. So good to see you. How are you doing today? Very well. I've enjoyed myself. Thank you. I grew up listening to your music and Come to my window probably has been one of the soundtracks of my life, I would say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I love this documentary and the way I think you healed Uh, those women through your music, through your songs. So I want to know how was that experience for you and how was that feeling of um, going back home? Both were healing. This, this healed me, not only mm. you know these women, but it really healed me. It had been a, a, a dream of mine for a while. My hometown had a lot of prisons. Johnny Cash came there when I was a little kid. And I thought, oh, prisons must be a great place of entertainment or something. Performed in prisons when I was in high school. It really uh, made a big impact on me how appreciative they were. And as my life has gone on, I always wanted to go back and do a show. But the way that life unfolds itself, as, as I was really getting close to this being a reality, I lost my son to an opioid uh, use disorder um, overdose. That experience really connected up with so many of the women that are in the prison that not only was doing a concert in prison just going to be a cool thing to do, to be able then to connect and and create a documentary on these women. 95% of the women in prison all have drug problem that were brought on by early trauma. And it's all the same. That's what I found out with these women that I spoke to. And it, it just started me thinking differently about incarceration and women, particularly behind bars. What do these women represent to you? Because we're going to see five different women, right? In mm -hmm. different cases and scenarios, obviously. These five women, they start out by writing me letters. That's how they connect to you, right? Yeah. And they were all so similar. You know, I started taking, you know, I had this happen to me when I was a kid. This was awful. I mean, horrible stories. You know, they found drugs, help with the pain. They thought it would help keep a relationship, but then, and then they commit a crime and then they're, they just start repeating the cycle. And it's just really clear what's going on here. What happened to you that moment when you saw them be free, thanks to your music and your lyrics and your songs, what happened to that heart, Melissa's heart and emotions? I love music and I love when I play and it's always so rewarding. This experience was Well, hundreds of times what my normal show does to me. And then going back and seeing the footage, how they caught these women while the songs were going on and how much they loved it. And, and then talking to them later and having them say, look, I forgot I was even here. It takes that sort of energy within oneself, that sort of understanding that you can feel joy and you're supposed to feel joy, then to keep that momentum going. Of course, your light in your difficult moments that you went through your life? Oh, wow. My father, he wasn't overly supportive, but he was he was a solid, you know, whatever I told him if I came and said, look, you know, I'm gay. He was like, well, all right, as long as you're happy. You know, he, he, mm -hmm. he always, it was always that support. He was one of my hard times because he died uh, when I was about 30. So I lost him when I was young. But I've always held on to his, you know, what would my dad do, that sort of thing. So I would say it's my father. Did music somehow save you? Because music obviously heals. Healed me in so many ways, not only writing it, really putting it down, digging in myself, kind of finding what I want and then how I want to overcome that contrast, that pain, that whatever it was, but also the performing of it. I mean, performing, come to my window over and over and over and over and over. I learn, I learn and I grow. And even though I've grown past the song, it's still inspiring because I can look out in the audience and I see people singing it. And, and that brings me <laughs> healing and that brings me much joy. Any artists that you would like to share a song with or, or stage or a duet? I'm very open, but... Um... What about Beyonce? Because now you know that she... <laughs> Okay. Cowboy Carter. Yeah, you call her up. You see if she's uh, available for something, okay? Yeah. Hold on. Let's let me, get, let yeah. me make a call. JC. Hey, Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have the chance to listen to her music? Because you're like, obviously, the big star in reference of country music and everything. I love Cowboy Carter. I love, I've, I've loved Beyonce from the beginning. And I met her when she was in Destiny's Child. I, for some reason, for like three Grammys in a row, I was sitting either in front of or behind them. So we kept meeting up with each other when they first broke on the scene. They were so sweet. 
And so I've known her since then. And anything I've ever been at, we have a, a really nice connection. Hey, when I see that, do it now. Give her a call. Melissa, future in Beyonce. Yeah. I'm going to get some credit for that. No, All right. It started in Argentina. <laughs> Do you remember any embarrassing moment on stage? Probably the most embarrassing thing was when I fell off the stage. There was a, a, a crowd crush and I moved to the side and there wasn't any more stage there. So I fell off. It's been lovely talking to you today, Melissa. You overcame cancer too, I guess. How many years? 19 years? 20 this year. I guess a lot of learning through that, right, as well? Yes, a lot of learning to take care of myself, putting myself first. That's where my health starts. No more stress. Stop trying to save other people. Concentrate on yourself. That's the best you can do for anybody else. Thank you so much. I can't leave you without you. You singing me, come to my window. Wow, can't sing it that high, but I can sing, come to my window. Come on inside. Thank you, Barbie.